Hi, I'm Selva Prabhakaran. In this, let's look at the actual logic and the intuition behind what goes on behind the scenes behind kernel density estimation. Okay, so quite straightforward. Suppose if you are given a data, right? let's say you have certain, certain set of values under this particular array X. Now, if you want to see how this data is distributed, we would go for something like a histogram. See, this is like a, this is an histogram for X, which contains six different values. Okay, these are the different six different values of X and the histogram looks something like this. Okay, now kernel using kernel density estimation, you can draw, you can plot or approximate this into a curve that might look something like what you have here on the right hand side. This is the output of kernel density estimation. Now, how did we go from a histogram to estimate this kind of a curve? What is happening behind the scenes is what we are going to try to understand. First, we will look at how to implement kernel density estimation in Python, then we will get into the actual logic. We import numpy, then under matplotlib.py dot, we import it as plt. We will also import Gaussian KDE, which is present under skypy.stats. This is the function that actually does the kernel density estimation. We create the data here. The data follows a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation of one. 1000 data points. If you draw a histogram, that looks something like this. So this is the histogram. The mean is centered around zero. All right. And we have a standard deviation of one. This is basically a standard normal distribution. All right. To implement kernel density estimation, we use Gaussian KDE, pass the data to it. You get this object the kernel density estimator. Okay, so we have trained the KDE here in this process. Now we create X, which goes all the way from minus three to plus three, thousand different data points. And for each value of X, we are going to score it using KDE. All right, we are computing the estimate, the density for each value of X, and that we are storing under density object. Then we plot that. On plotting this, you will get a curve that looks something like this. So now what we want to know is what is happening under Gaussian, Gaussian underscore KDE function. So what happens is this, for each of the six data points we have here, okay, for each of the six data points, we draw a Gaussian kernel for each of the six data points centered around those respective data points. So for this, this particular data point, we are drawing a Gaussian kernel centered around this. Likewise, for this particular data point, we have a Gaussian kernel that goes something like this. Now, once we have all the six Gaussian kernels, we have six different, six different curves here. If you count it, you will have six different curves. Okay. Once you have this for every point from the extreme left to the extreme right, for every point, take any point, let's take this particular point. Okay. For every point, we will add up the values of Gaussian kernels. That is, it is meeting at this particular point. It is also meeting at this particular point. It is also meeting at this particular point. So, the y-axis value for an x-axis value of this will be the summation of this value plus this value plus this value. You add up all these three, it is going to meet somewhere over here. Likewise, we do the same, not just for these six data points, not just for this, for the entire range of values along the x-axis. For each point along the x-axis, say you take this particular point, you will sum up this value, this value, this value, this value, this value and this value. We add up at every point where you have the curves and that is going to meet or add up to whatever value that you have on the blue curve. Now a natural follow-up question is going to be, now we know that we are going to draw Gaussian kernels around each of these six data points and we know that these kernels are centered around each of these data points. But how wide are these kernels? Should it be very narrow or should it be as wide as this? We haven't discussed that, right? That's because this is entirely controlled by the user. Now, if you want very narrow curves that go something like this, like this, and like this, you can control this by adjusting the bandwidth parameter, which we have as a parameter under the Gaussian KDE function. So let me open a new tab here, right? And do question mark Gaussian underscore KDE. You should see a parameter called BW method. By setting this, by controlling this, you will be able to control what should be the width of each of those Gaussian kernels. So typically you will want to set it such that it is not giving you any jaggedness in the curves, right? You want to avoid all this. You want to make it smooth that all the jaggedness will go off and you are getting a resulting curve will be as smooth as possible like this. So that's the plain logic behind how kernel density estimation works.